Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Matt Doran for CardRunners.com, bringing you uh, four tables of live play action on Bovada. Four tables of 100 NL, six max. And we're just going to go through it. Okay, uh, next hand is a hand on table four. Uh, you can see it's going on right now. Basically, the button opened. Um, uh, he, he's opening the button. He's been playing very tight. Uh, and the flop comes sick. And I, I decided to call pre the ace nine, which I think is probably close to the bottom of my calling range. I think folding would also probably have been okay because of how tight this guy has literally been playing. But uh, a guy playing this tight is probably still opening the button reasonably wide, uh, just as most people do. So the flop comes king eight six, and I have an overcard and a backdoor flush draw, and uh, so I do check this flop to him, and he does bet. Uh, and he bets four into uh, four into six, 65. So <laughs> the guy's been playing pretty tight. Uh, so I think that unless he has a really strong hand here, he's probably just going to fold to a raise. Now maybe he does. I don't really expect him to fold a king. But I do think he could fold a hand as good as uh, a pair between eights and kings. And uh, that most of the time he just doesn't have very much here. Since we don't have any history and I've been playing tight myself, I think it just seems like a spot where here's a guy who's playing pretty weak uh, and he gets shown strength from a guy who also has been playing fairly tight at that table. Uh, I have some, some, I do have the nut flush draw, uh, uh, the backdoor nut flush draw, so there's several turn cards that I can continue to barrel. Also, I can barrel like a seven or an ace. So this that's basically my plan here. If I was to get raised here, I'm just going to fold. Uh, and if I get um, and if he calls uh, if he calls my my flop raise, you know, then I'm only going to barrel those specific turn cards, and I'm I'm going to shut it down on on any other one. So I do make a raise here. I raise to 11, and he folds. So even though he's been playing pretty tight, it just seems like a spot that I'm going to tend to get a lot of credit and that he would have to have a pretty strong hand to continue. So as you can see here, he bet with, uh, he, he did open with a wide range, 6-4 of spades. He did bet this flop as a C-bet and we check-raised him and we're, we were able to get him to fold a hand better than ours. So again, I think it is uh, quite a valuable educational tool to use the complete information that we get off of the full hand histories. Uh, maybe the only good thing about Bavada is that we can use these, these tools to see what kind of fold equity we truly do have. And uh, so happy with how we were able to uh, manufacture this pot here. Okay, let's go to the next hand. Okay, so got a few hands developing here and just going to let it run and go as long as I can and just uh, just keep talking through them. So uh, the Aces hand doesn't really develop as much as, uh, as uh, I would have liked. Uh, we just end up raising here, isolating and, with Aces and hitting a dry board and I think we see that and he folds. Uh, with the Jack-10 hand, maybe a little bit more interesting... Uh, the button it folded to, and he he raised to five dollars, so he raised the five x on the button, and the small blind really really uh, loose uh, aggressive small blind with a short stack calls, and I have maybe my favorite single raised pot hand, Jack Ten suited, uh, one of my favorite hands to play in a single raised pot, so. I'm going to try to play here if I can, and I think I can justify it, so I do call. So three-handed to the flop, and I make second pair. It checks to the button who bets, and I'm not going to be able to fold second pair uh, to a bet. He bets close to two-thirds. I'm definitely calling. Not really any doubt about it. Not really thinking about raising or anything like that. 